What's up YouTube, it's Flygon HG. I do a bunch of hardcore Nuzlocks on my channel here. And in this video, what we're doing is we are going to be ranking all of the encounters in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green on Nuzlocke viability. So we're gonna be thinking about how good of a Pokemon they are in general, where you get them in the game, how good they are at that point in the game, as well as which Pokemon you will be sacrificing if you end up getting this Pokemon. So it's gonna be a holistic ranking. I'm gonna do my best. This is my personal opinion. Take everything with a grain of salt. I've done a bunch of these and I'm just hoping that this will help people who will wanna get started on a Nuzlocke and don't know where to start. I think Fire Red and Leaf Green are really, really good first Nuzlocke games because they're pretty challenging. They're kind of challenging. They're not super, super easy. They also aren't super, super hard and you get a lot of really useful encounters that I'll break down here. So yeah, if you are looking for a kind of cheat sheet or some advice on how to start a Nuzlocke, I think this is going to be a really good video for you. Highly recommend starting with Fire Red and Leaf Green, and hopefully you have some fun and uh, branch out into more Nuzlocke's after that. But before we start, I want to shout out the sponsor of this video, Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. Bloodline Heroes of Lithus is a 3D mobile RPG where you can explore fantastical worlds while fighting powerful enemies, collecting new champions, and building your kingdoms. In the world of Lithus, new heroes will be born. By combining the forces of various bloodlines, you can create powerful heirs to your kingdom. With so many bloodlines, the possible combinations are limitless. You'll recruit unique fantasy characters such as orcs, dwarves, and my personal favorite, the Dragonborn. The Clan of Karg are dragonborn warriors who, as you may have guessed, can turn into powerful dragons during combat. What's cool is that you can get the Karg Clan for free just by logging in. Like Hannes is a lineage of werewolves that you're sure to encounter on your adventures as well. They enjoy drinking fruit punch from a chalice and playing fetch. And then there's Fulgur the Demigods, who can marry dragonborns to create the adorable little hybrid heir that you see right here. But I'm just scratching the surface of what you can do in Heroes of Lithus. Throughout your campaign, your city will grow and you'll unlock new features that keep the game fresh so that there's always something to do every time you play. Intuitive and easy to use controls make this game an engaging experience that's free to play on both Android and iOS. So if you're interested in checking out Bloodline Heroes of Lithus, you can use the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to download the game now. And as a special gift, you can use my gift code in the description below to get one champion token, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds to help you on your journey. Thanks so much to Bloodline Heroes of Lithus for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get to the rankings. So, we can go ahead and just get started here. We'll go in uh, Pokedex order, starting with the starters. We are just going to be ranking the evolution line as a whole, so I'm not going to be individually ranking Bulbasaur and Ivysaur. It's just the whole evolution line in one ranking. So, Venusaur. Venusaur for a hardcore Nuzlocke is easily the best of the three starters for you to choose. Venusaur is an S-tier Pokemon, easily takes care of Brock, easily takes care of Misty, and those two gems can be pretty difficult if you don't have an easy check into them. So that's great. It's really good into Lieutenant Surge, and it generally just provides really good supportive moveset throughout the run. I highly recommend choosing Venusaur if this is your first time playing. Charizard is obviously not bad. Charizard is a starter, so they're all going to be pretty good, but I don't think that it makes sense from a pure Nuzlocke perspective, unless you want to choose Charizard when you could choose Venusaur, but it is a solid Pokemon. It's an A-tier Pokemon. It's fast. Flamethrower does nasty damage. You're going to be hitting Pokemon really strong. It's really good into Erika, I guess, but Erika is usually not that difficult and there's plenty of flying types, but yeah, I mean, Charizard is a solid Pokemon. You can't go wrong with that. Blastoise is another one. It's it's going to be an A-tier Pokemon as well because the starters are good. Blastoise is, of course, a water type, and there are dozens of water types that you can pick, so you don't really need to use the water type starter almost ever in Pokemon because there's usually much better water types that you can get without having to waste it as your starter slot. But Blastoise is good. It's really bulky, which is really useful, and it's got a pretty decent move pool, and you get Water Pulse really early in this game, so that's a pretty solid move. Butterfree. Butterfree is likely going to be your Viridian City encounter, either Butterfree or Beedrill. I think Beedrill is better than Butterfree. Butterfree is a B tier encounter. It's not terrible. Um, actually, maybe we put it in C tier. I might have to kind of like realign myself here a little bit and think about things a little more as we get further into this. But for now, I'm going to put it in high C tier. You know, you get Sleep Powder and it's pretty fast. And with Compound Eyes, Sleep Powder almost never misses. So that's pretty good. But it's move pool, especially in these games, is really bad. The physical special split is not nice to it. And it really can't do much after the first couple battles. It is solid into Misty though. Beedrill is very underrated. I don't know if I want to put him in A tier. I could put him in high A tier, but let's just put him in high B tier for now. B for Beedrill. <laughs> 
I'm funny. B for Beedrill. Beedrill is very strong for such an early Pokemon, and it has one of the only bug type moves, meaning that it's really good into Sabrina. Of course, Beedrill is part poison type, so you're going to be weak to her psychic moves, so you just want to be careful for that. Be careful for that. <laughs> I'm so funny. But um, make sure you just outspeed or you can set up an agility on her lead Kadabra and then Twin Needle just kills all of her psychic types. They're very physically frail. Beedrill's strong enough that double Twin Needle should kill them all. Very, very useful Pokemon for Sabrina specifically. And honestly, for Misty with her Starmie, Twin Needle does good damage there too. So don't sleep on this guy. He's also f scary. Look at him. Just look at his freaking pointies everywhere. Ugh. Anyways, this Pokemon sucks. Pidgeot, I, d I, can't, I can't put it in F tier because it's going to be, well, can I? Can I? Yeah, it's my list. F tier. Thank you, Pidgeot. Pidgeot it's not very good. It is the bulkiest of the other flying types, but it's really weak. And especially in this game where like Brave Bird doesn't exist, you really need some power in your flying types because like Gust and Wing Attack off of whatever lame ass attack stat this has is not cutting it. But I mean, it's it's not terrible. F tier might be a little mean. We'll, we'll put it in C tier. It's, it's not terrible. But um, and, and the bulk helps. It can learn Feather Dance, but like, I don't know. I would much rather take most of the other flying types in this game. Firo. Firo is a B tier encounter. Not amazing, but it's much better than Pidgeotto. It fully evolves at level 18 or 20 or whatever, so you're going to get it much before Pidgeot, which is really nice. It can learn Drill Peck, which is super useful, and is actually one of the only good flying type moves that isn't Fly or Aerial Ace, so I would always take Furo over this stupid Pidgeot thing. He, he's not as good as Beedrill, though. Raticate, Raticate is nuts. Um, I, I'm going to put him in high B tier as well. He's not quite A tier. If you could guarantee Guts on Rattata, then I would put it in A tier because Guts Pokemon are disgusting. You can just pre-poison or pre-burn it and then crush stuff, but very early high Hyper Fang, 90% accuracy kind of sucks, but very early Hyper Fang is super useful. It's surprisingly strong, surprisingly fast. This is one of the better normal types out there, especially because you get it so early. So don't sleep on this guy either. Charbok. Charbok is a little too weak. I'm going to put him in C tier as well. He's, he's not as good as Butterfree. Charbok just has a pretty lackluster move pool. Intimidate is useful, but if you don't get Intimidate, then Shed Skin's not very helpful. I would say that if you could guarantee Intimidate, then he'd be in high B tier or something like that. But for the same reason that Rattata and Raticate are in high B tier. We're putting this in C tier. There's much better poison types. It's not particularly strong. It's not particularly bulky. It's not particularly fast. You know, it, its move pool is pretty weak. A lot of the Pokemon's move pools in this game are really weak, but Charbok is definitely one of them. Raichu. This means that you probably got Pikachu from Viridian Forest. Congratulations. You're a lucky person. It's a solid Pokemon. I mean, it, it's probably better than these. It makes Misty really easy, obviously, because you're going to have a strong thunder type or an electric type, I think is what they're actually called. But yeah, anyways. Solid Pokemon, very fast, very speedy. Um, not the best electric type in the game, obviously, because Magneton exists, but it's pretty good. Sand Slash, not as good in this game as it is in Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, just because of how things shake up. It's also a Leaf Green exclusive. I think Arbok is Fire Red exclusive now that I think about it, but I'll put both of them in the mid C tier. You get Earthquake very, very late on this guy because you're going to have to get it from Giovanni, and at that point, he's not doing that much. Most of the Elite Four in this game is special instead of physical. He's just really not providing that much that you can't get from other Pokemon. I don't know. He's just not that good because there's no really difficult threat that he handles better than other Pokemon. Unlike in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, where he's really good for Norman, there's no like, you know, super strong normal type that he has to deal with. So he's pretty average. Nidto Queen and Nidto King. Um, both of these Pokemon are pretty good. The downside with all stone evolutions, of which there are many in this game, is that they usually have pretty bad level up move pools. And by the time you level them up, if you want to get the good moves for Nidorina and Nidorino, you're going to be stuck with them for a really long time. And nobody likes that, but these Pokemon are, are pretty solid. I'll put them in high B tier. They're both, they both have really good coverage. You can throw some TNs on them and they're pretty good. Nidoking King and Nidoqueen Queen both can obviously hit with Earthquake really hard. So they're high B tier, but they're not A tier. Um, well, actually, are they better than Raichu? They probably are better than Raichu just because they're bulkier. I'm going to actually put Raichu in high B tier. Clefable. This is another stone evolution, this time with a Moonstone. It's okay. It's bulky and it gets good special attack attacking moves by TM, but its level up moveset is trash. It does have Encore though, so you can never underestimate Encore. I'm going to put him in low A tier. Pretty solid Pokemon. Nine Ninetales. This is a Leaf Green exclusive. Significantly worse than Arcanine, unfortunately, but not terrible. It's a strong fire type. You don't really need a strong fire type in this game, other than against, um, what's her name? The Erica girl. 
So I'm going to put it in low B tier, but I, I wish this Pokemon was better and it gets flamethrower so late that like, unless you want to get the TM for it, you're going to have to delay Vulpix for a long time. It, it's not super worth it. Wigglytuff is like Clefable, but worse. So we're just going to put him in low B tier. Not as bulky despite having more HP, not as much special attack, doesn't get Encore. It does get Sing, I guess, but low B tier, not a super useful Pokemon. I would much rather get the Nidorans from route three or five or whatever than these guys. Okay, Golbat. Despite not evolving into Crobat, Golbat that is still a pretty good Pokemon. It's fast. It's surprisingly bulky. You can't teach it Sludge Bomb in this game. I don't think that the TM for Sludge Bomb is before the Elite Four, so this is not nearly as good as if you had a Crobat, obviously, but it's solid. I think I'll put it in high B tier right above Ninetales. Excuse me. Nine Tails. All right, Vile Plume. It's another grass type. Venusaur is always better. I don't... Uh, I mean, it's okay. You do get Giga Drain pretty early that you can just teach it via TM, but what are you using this for? You're not going to use it for Lorelei because she has too many ice types. It's not, I mean, it's okay into Bruno, I guess. It's actually decent into Bruno, but not good into Agatha or Lance, obviously, and doesn't really help with your rival much either, especially if you go with Venusaur. But I guess if you go with something like Charizard where there's a Blastoise, it's solid. Uh, let's, let's put him in high B tier as well, a little bit before Golbat. Parasect. Spore is cool, but other than that, this thing is ass. It's too slow to be a reliable Spore user, even if you max out its speed. It's not going to be outspeeding too much. It's better than Wigglytuff. It's not as good as Firo. Firo's is kind of low here. I, I, maybe I'm being a little too mean to some of these Pokemon. Firo is quite good, but yeah, Parasect, just for Spore, we'll put it here, but Pokemon's trash. Venomoth, the Pokemon that gets hit by ground moves because it's bug poison and not bug flying. I mean, it's okay. It can learn Psychic. It's got slightly better special attack than Butterfree, but it doesn't have compound eyes, obviously. Tinted Lens makes it way better, but that's it's not in this game, so this is a pretty mediocre Pokemon. I would put this somewhere around here, maybe. I mean, actually, because of Compound Eyes, we'll just put it a little bit behind Butterfree. Okay, Doug Trio. Doug Trio is fast. It's a guaranteed encounter. Always catch this in Diglett Cave. Well, I mean, actually, hope that you catch the Diglett, not the Doug Trio, because the Doug Trio are really hard to catch and they can arena trap your Pokemon and kill you. But you're always going to get Diglett, and this always just completely trivializes Lieutenant Surge. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in A tier. It falls off a little bit after that. It's just a little too weak, but you you give it Earthquake and it's gonna do damage. It's just not quite as good as some of the other ground types in the game or other Pokemon that you can just teach a ground type move to. And in this game, ground types are not as necessary because you're not gonna get Earthquake until after the eighth gym and Earthquake isn't super useful into the Elite Four. But it's a solid Pokemon and it's always fun to have like a fast speedy thing that guarantees outspeed stuff. Persian. Persian is not good. If it had Technician, it would be okay, but Technician doesn't exist in this game. This is a C tier Pokemon for sure. We're gonna put it here. It's not completely useless, but like its level up move set sucks. I don't know. I mean, actually, maybe I do put it in F tier. Yeah, this is not a good Pokemon. Oh, well, it's fast. I don't know. I can I just I'm struggling to see what I'm gonna put in F tier. I'll be I'll be I'll be generous here. Some, some people are cat people, I guess. Yeah, it's it's, it's a cat. It, it uses slash and stuff. You can also use it to farm for money, I guess, if you want with payday. So that's cool. Golduck. Golduck is um a pretty solid water type. Water types are you're gonna want one water type in this game because clicking surf with one of the water types kills the last two gyms. You literally can't screw that up. Just give it some EVs. We'll put it in little... How about, how about here? Yeah. Here. Here's good. Like mid B tier. I don't know. It's solid. It's fast. It hits surf. Does what a water type's supposed to do, I guess. Mankey or monkey or primate or prime monkey, whatever. This guy's uh, solid. He's fast. He's strong. I don't know why you would use him instead of Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan, but I don't know. Maybe he's stronger. I don't actually know the stats on this guy too, too well, but let's go ahead and put him right around here. He's a solid encounter especially early game, I guess, but he's he's really, really frail, so you're gonna have to watch out for crits, and I don't know. He's not that necessary for the Elite Four either, so this is this is an okay Pokemon. Arcanine. Arcanine is definitely an A-tier Pokemon. It's not super, super high A-tier because it has many of the same problems as Nene Tails in the sense that you're gonna have to delay his evolution for a long time or rely on TMs, and Growlithe is really, really bad, but at least this one gets Intimidate instead of Flash Fire. It's a little bit bulkier, and generally speaking, there's not much of a difference in power power level. Uh, this thing can also learn extreme speed, which is pretty cool. Not super useful, but it is pretty cool. I like Arcanine, low A tier. Poliwrath. Um, this Pokemon sucks. It's it, it's it's not good. I'm going to put it in C tier. Like, yeah, you can get Belly Drum, I guess. And Belly Drum is always a thing. But like, this is not a very good water type because of the physical special 
split. It's got a pretty special attack stat and there's faster fighting types that hit harder. So if you're looking for a fighting type, it's not super well. It just does neither of the two things that it could be a water type user or a fighting type user particularly well. So it's just kind of this jack of all trades thing. I'm actually going to put this below these two. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be something here. All right. We're going to split up the evolutions in case that you don't want to evolve via trade for the trade evolutions. Kadabra though is an A tier Pokemon. Kadabra is super fast. We haven't really talked about Koga at all, but that's because you can usually get a psychic type and that makes Koga much easier. This guy for sure deals with that perfectly. You just bring him out, click psychic like five times. Psychic is a TM that you can get from Saffron City immediately after the third gym. So just do that with Kadabra and you're good to go. Same thing goes for Alakazam, but it's even stronger. Yeah, this is an S tier Pokemon. Very strong. Um, it is frail. Just remember that. So it's a little harder to switch in on things, especially on set mode. But you know, Psychic is just disgusting, especially with badge boost, especially like into some like the fighting types that Bruno has, for example, like you're just going to one shot all of Bruno's Pokemon and you're probably going to outspeed Agatha's Gengar and one shot all of them as well. So very, very good Pokemon here. Machoke. Fighting types, again, aren't really super useful in this game. The ones like once you get them, the hardest stuff like the rock type gym leader are pretty much over and then it's just Bruno's Onyxes, Onyx Psy, and those things fall to any special move. So like there's not really a super necessary need for them. Uh, this isn't as good as Primeape. I would take Primeape over Machoke. Um, I guess you're probably guaranteed to get this from Rock Tunnel after dupes, or I guess you could get Geodude. I don't know. Machamp's a little bit better. It's probably the better of these like average guys here. We'll put him somewhere here. He's, I mean, he's probably better than like Golbat, I guess. Maybe, maybe B tier is too low, but whatever. He's not wearing clothes, so we're punishing him for it. Victory Bell. Um, Victory Bell is like Vileplume, but worse in this game because there's no physical special split. Victory Bell kind of sucks. No sleep powder. Maybe it does have sleep powder. I don't know. It's, it's not good. Don't, don't use Victory Bell. Oh, I mean, I guess this is what? I always forget that these ones are, there's a bunch of exclusives in these games. So this is Fire Red. This is Leaf Green. I mean, I guess if you can't get Vileplume, then you have to use Victory Bell if you don't get Venusaur, but I don't know. Grass types aren't super necessary either. You can just skip out on it. Tentacruel. Tentacruel is an S tier Pokemon. You know, this is very similar to what we talked about in Pokemon Emerald, but it's very fast, very bulky, and hits very hard. Teach it Ice Beam, and you're going to take care of Lance. Teach it Surf, and you're going to take care of Giovanni and Blaine. Super good Pokemon. Uh, the Poison Resist is also really nice for Koga, if you want it. Not good into Sabrina, obviously, but you should have plenty of answers into Sabrina that aren't this Tentacruel. So very good Pokemon. Always get this. I would highly recommend putting it on your Elite Four team. Grass Traveler and Golem. So if you get these in Mount Moon instead of like, let's say Zubat, then obviously they completely trivialize Lieutenant Surge, who is otherwise pretty difficult because of Double Team and Thunder Wave from uh, Raichu. But again, you're going to get Doug Trio for that, guaranteed. So these guys don't serve as much of a purpose there. And then they really fall off as a lot of the, the later gyms other than Koga are special types. But they're pretty good into Koga. Um, they're good absorbers of self-destruct, of which there are plenty of coughings that self-destruct in Silifco. So they are quite useful, actually. I'll put this one a little bit below Machamp here. It's pretty good. And then Golem. I mean, you know, they're basically the same thing. Golem is just a little bit better. We can break A tier and put Golem into A tier because he's got magnitude. He'll he'll get Earthquake pretty good. And he's a, a just a generally good defensive pivot. So yeah, low A tier, high B tier for these guys. Definitely better than in Emerald, in my opinion, other than their usefulness into Norman. Okay, Rapidash. Rapidash is a trash Pokemon. Rapidash rhymes with trash. It is trash. I, I would argue that this is actually an F tier Pokemon. It's a little too weak to do anything. Like, see, this just feels mean. I Maybe we'll just have to, like, bump some of these C tier guys down to F tier and some of these B tiers down to C tier. I don't know. I'm going to put this as F tier though. It's it's not a good Pokemon. It evolves super late. You don't even get it until super late. Like, right? You get it at Cinnabar Island. I don't know why there's just like a bunch of horses on fire walking around a mansion, but that is where you get it. Or the Sevi Islands, I guess. Not a, It's it's just not a good Pokemon. Its moveset is really bad. Its stats are weird with the lack of the physical special split. It's, it's a pretty bad Pokemon. And I think you can definitely either get Arcanine or Ninetales and you can usually guarantee one of those two. So Rapidash is pretty useless. Slowbro. I believe Slowbro is only a Leaf Green exclusive, but Slowbro is an S tier Pokemon. I would say that this is one of the best Pokemon in the game. This thing is super bulky and a combination of giving it Ice Beam and Psychic and Surf make this thing able to pretty much solo the entire Elite Four. Nothing can touch this thing other than maybe Agatha's Gengars, which you should be able to counter with something else. But this Pokemon just with Slack Off, Calm Mind, like whatever you want, it can learn a bunch of good TM you can just kill pretty much the entire Elite Four with this. It's a very, very good Pokemon. And look at him. He's, look at him. Uh. 
Okay, um, Magneton, another S tier Pokemon. It's the only steel type in this game. So that's gotta count for something. Very, very good. Very strong special attacker. It's gonna take care of Lorelei, no problem. It should take care of Agatha, no problem. Should be pretty good into Lance, like against Aerodactyl, for example, as well as, uh, well, not Charizard, but uh, you know, this, it's just a really good Pokemon and it's bulky. It's pretty fast for how bulky it is. And it hits like a freaking truck or like three trucks held together with magnetism. All right. From high to low, this thing sucks. The only way you're gonna get it is by trading your Spearow or your Firo, depending on how you do your rule set. That might mean that you have to catch the Spearow and then trade it, or like maybe you can just catch the Spearow just for the sake of getting this, but it's not better than Firo, that's for sure. And it's, it's definitely not even better than this. It does get Swords Dance, so if you wanna do Swords Dance shenanigans, then go freaking nuts, but there's other Pokemon that can learn Swords Dance that aren't this guy. Although Swords Dance, I think, is also a TM that you can't get until post game. So this is one of the only Swords Dance users other than Scyther. So I guess it's not totally useless, but I don't care. We've been too nice to other Pokemon. We're going to put this in F tier too. It's like, it's far-fetched. Like, come on, come on, it's far-fetched. Dodrio is Firo if it had three heads, so it's like better, you know? Probably the best normal flying type, or just is the best normal flying type. Very fast, much stronger than Firo. Get, get over there. Good job. Hi, B tier. Um, it learns Tri Attack in this game, which is a physical move. So it's actually really solid. You don't have to waste like, like it's basically strength with the ability to either paralyze, burn, or freeze. So that's kind of cool if you don't want to waste your return TM on this guy. Very good Pokemon. Can just devastate with a lot of damage really quickly. I think this thing might be able to just like with some attack EVs, might be able to just outspeed and kill all of Sabrina's Pokemon as well. So I don't know. Good job, Dodrio. Proud of you. Dugon um, is an ice type. So you're going to get stab ice moves, which is pretty cool and pretty nice into Lance and his dragonites and stuff so i'd put this in a tier it's not as good well yeah 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 low a tier is fine it's it's a solid pokemon it's not amazing it's a little weak and a little slow but you know he'll get the job done look at his face he's so cute okay muck you're probably never gonna use this right like i mean i guess maybe you get it from cinnabar island or you could get it if you don't want to get eevee which you never should not get eevee from celadon city but if you don't want to get eevee from celadon city you can wait until you get surf and get this in like that sludge pile in the middle of celadon city but this pokemon is um it's okay it's not amazing it's not really gonna do anything it's gonna be taken out by psychic moves by that point in the game it's fine but like it, it, yeah no it just it just doesn't really do anything that useful especially because you you don't have leftovers or recovery in this game so okay cloister another water stone evolution i don't really know what this does um it's really bulky on the physical side really weak on the special side i guess that's good for something i guess you might be able to train it to outspeed and kill the uh the dragonites with ice beam or something maybe it's got skill link in this game I'm, I'm not sure i don't have too much experience with this maybe this is an unfair placement but i'm just gonna put it somewhere in b tier it's it's an okay pokemon but without shell smash without like some of the later moves and abilities and stuff it's not nearly as good so sorry cloister mid b tier haunter haunter high a tier this pokemon is like kadabra okay mid a tier this pokemon is like kadabra but it gets sh i mean shadow ball i guess is not that useful because it's physical but just use psychic from this guy it's immune to normal type moves it's got levitate so it's it's a little bit better at surviving than kadabra and it does basically the same thing really strong special attacker really fast this will kill koga this is the face of koga's killer you guarantee this too unlike kadabra which can be kind of hard to catch because you have to catch it via abra so for that reason yeah yeah so for that reason we're gonna put this higher than Kadabra. Maybe it deserves to be a little bit higher than this. I'm just babbling at this point. Haunter's a great Pokemon. Go get it, use it, destroy it, love it. Okay, Gengar is like Alakazam, but better for the same reasons. Okay, Onix. Onix is, um, I wanna put this in F tier because Onix sucks, but it's not an F tier Pokemon. I mean, you're gonna get it, if you get it, you're gonna get it in Brock Tunnel. And at that point, it's not particularly useful. I mean, I guess it's good into like the early Giovanni battles, like against his King con which can be kind of tough i guess for that reason some of these fighting types might be a little bit better but like i don't know it's i would much rather have the machokes we'll put this in mid c tier it's probably a little bit more serviceable than this muck i guess but other than those giovanni fights it's like what are you doing with this you know like like what are, what are we doing it's got 45 attack oddish is better than that okay hypno hypno is almost a guaranteed encounter right on the route to the right of vermilion city and psychic types are really good into this game they're really good into agatha they're really good into bruno they're really good into koga i've you know i'm 
saying the same stuff. I think this is about where Kadabra is. It's obviously way bulkier than Kadabra and a little bit weaker on the special side, but he's, it's a very solid Pokemon. And since you're pretty much guaranteed to get it, this is a very useful thing to pick up. You can also teach it Calm Mind and it's got decent attack actually as well. So you can use Shadow Ball with him and he learns Meditate. So you can even potentially set up, you know, a physical sweep or something. This is also very good in the Lorelei. Okay, Kingler. Kingler is a Leaf Green exclusive maybe we'll put him he's not as good as no 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 this is a c tier pokemon this is this is not good actually especially because of the physical special split or the lack thereof this pokemon sucks i might even put this in f tier yeah this is not a good pokemon who cares also that's too mean to rapidash yeah yeah this pokemon sucks don't use it i mean maybe i don't even remember does this thing learn swords dance by level up i don't know but there's so many other water types don't use this one electrode electrode's not super great in this game it's okay um you probably don't need to use explosion like you kind of need to or like is actually kind of a good play into tate and eliza and emerald but there's nothing that's quite the same there's nothing that's similar to that in this game so electrode has a little less utility because you can't just explode on something i mean maybe it's good into Lance, like if you want to blow up Dragonite, but I don't know. It's an okay Pokemon. It's it's gonna be better than these C tier Pokemon, but like I don't know, it's not much better. Eggy Boy, another psychic type. This time it's grass type, so that's kind of cool. Makes it a little worse into Lorelei than some of the other psychic types, because obviously she can hit this thing with super effective ice moves. But you know, if you don't have Venusaur, it's a fairly bulky grass type. Um, it's got hypnosis, it can get chlorophyll and be fast in the sun if you want to be like a sun team or something. You know, it's it's better than vile plume i'm not gonna put it in a tier we'll put it in high b tier um a lot of these pokemon just are like pretty good pokemon they just don't have like one thing that they counter really really well i guess you could argue that this is good into sabrina and you know you can wall it and then giga drain or something but it makes it a little scarier that she can just set up calm mind on you so i actually wouldn't really recommend that and then obviously it's not super great into giovanni or blaine because giovanni has all those poison types so uh you know i don't know it's okay i guess it's okay that Giovanni can kill Doug Trio and all those and doesn't have the poison type weakness that like Venusaur does so that Earthquake is actually resisted. It's okay. I don't know. Okay, Marowak. Um, if you find a thick club, this thing's a monster, but you know, I, I would put this around where Doug Trio is if they were both equally likely to be caught, but you're probably not gonna get this unless you get lucky and don't get Haunter. And that's not really being lucky because Haunter is really good. So this Pokemon, unfortunately, is like more of a liability because it means that you just don't get Haunter. I mean, I guess it means that you do decent damage into Koga, but again, Haunter deals with Koga much better, especially because Haunter can't get exploded on by the Weezing. So unfortunately, this guy is probably going to be in C tier as well. I, I We can put him higher than Butterfree because he is useful if you get him, but I would always rather have Haunter. Okay, Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. You have to choose between one of these two. Um, depending on how you do your encounters, these might be separate from the Lapras encounter that you get in uh, Sylphco, or should I say La Pra, excuse me, pardon my French. So we'll we'll do them as if we can get both La Pra and one of these guys. If there was the physical special split correctly in this game, I would always pick Hitmonchan because you get the Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch. But those are really useless in this game because Hitmonchan is not a special attacker um, and it's pretty much a liability. For that reason, I think Hitmonlee is a little bit faster if I remember correctly and has a little bit more special defense. So ultimately it is the better one of the two because they can both learn Brick Break and that's probably what you're going to want to use so that you don't miss a bunch of moves. But again, I would put these, these are probably the best of the fighting types that you can get, especially because you can actually get them pretty early. I mean, I guess about the same as Machamp and stuff, but you can actually just go in and try and bang out the whole fighting dojo right when you get to Saladon City and get the tea from the lady. So you can get these pretty early. These really help into Giovanni as well, and they're guaranteed, so that's good. I'd do something like this. They're both pretty solid, pretty fast, but like, I do wish they were a little bit better. Lickitung. Lickitung is only through trading. You have to trade a Poliwhirl for Lickitung. There's a lot of other normal types in this game. Lickitung is not a particularly good one. He's bulky, I guess, and he's kind of weird looking, so he's got that going for him, I guess, but I don't even know if he's better than Jigglypuff. Like, Jigglypuff or Wigglytuff at least can put people to sleep, and, you know, I don't know, has a tuft on his hair instead of, like, demented tongue. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he's really, yeah, you know, poor guy, but that's how it goes. Weezing is like this guy, but has Levitate, which makes him better. You know, he's bulky, I guess. Yes, he's okay. Maybe maybe I'm forgetting something that these poison types can do well, but I can't really think of it off the top of my head, so they're just gonna stay here. Um, these guys are better than Onyx. Come on. 
Okay, Ride On. Uh, Ride On is likely what you're gonna be getting in the Safari Zone if you go for like a random encounter and you already have Parasect and Venonette and all of that crap. So, um, it's okay. I mean, it's really strong. It's definitely better than Graveler. I would actually put it around where Golem is, right? Like, it does basically the same thing these guys do. So, but you get it later, so let's just put it right below Golem. Solid, strong Pokemon, but not super useful in this game where a lot of the late game is special attackers. Chansey. Does doesn't get seismic toss in this game. I don't think it gets seismic toss in most games, but um, it is, you know, like Blissey, a disgusting special wall. So it does have that going for her, but this is not really a game where you need to do too much stalling or anything. So I don't really know if it's ultimately worth it. You're also probably never going to get this. It's super difficult to get and super difficult to catch. So you're probably never going to get this. We're just going to put this in B tier. It's not as useful as some of these other guys here. Tangela, you can guarantee this if you get the Doduo dupe, you can get this south of Pallet Town. It's not horrible. Then again, is it? I don't know. I mean, it's got Leech Seed, right? I don't really know too much about this Pokemon. It's pure grass type, so that's okay. Uh, we'll just put it here. It's like mid B tier. It's a perfectly fine Pokemon, but it's not going to turn any heads, you know? Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is cool, but also like Chansey, you're probably not going to get it ever. And you can always just use Raticate for basically the same thing, like a strong physical attacker that's a normal type. So I don't know. It's better than Chansey. It's got a higher catch rate than Chansey. Yeah, you know, whatever. Seedra. Seedra is around where Golduck is. I think I did this in Emerald too. They're both about the same thing. I don't think, I was wrong actually that I don't believe this thing can get Swift Swim. I think it's guaranteed to have Poison Point. So I was wrong in my Emerald video, but you know, it's fast, it's speedy, solid. You'll be able to kill the dragons with Ice Beam. Uh, I don't know what else you want from it. It's solid. It'll kill Blaine if you catch it. Go, go nuts, you know? Okay. Sea King. Um, sea King's an F tier Pokemon. That might be mean, but it is what it is. Another physical water type before the physical special split. So, uh, sorry, Sea King. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Starmie. This is Leaf Green exclusive, right? I think that's true. Maybe that's not true. I don't know. Yeah, it's still an S tier Pokemon. I, I don't know. A lot of these Pokemon are the same S tier Pokemon from the Emerald video, but yeah, I don't know what to say. It's really fast. It can use Recover. It's got Ice Beam. It's surprisingly bulky. You're going to tear through a lot of the Elite Four with this, this Water Psychic combo. I mean, I'd rather have... Actually, would I? Isn't this just like... Like, these are basically the same Pokemon. They're both Water Psychic, and they're both really good into the Elite Four. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, maybe even better than Slowbro because you're going to outspeed everything. Slowbro at least has to take hits because, like, believe it or not, but Slowbro is kind of slow. So, how about we do this? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I I'd still rather have this than Magneton. All right. Mr. Mime, uh, you're going to trade your Abra for this. So I don't know. It's got Encore. It's got the life light screen and Reflect and all that crap. But this is like the hardest of the psychic types to get. And I don't think I would trade Kadabra for Mr. Mime, to be honest. Uh, it's around here. Wait a minute. Okay, I've just realized that Beedrill and Raticate should be higher than this for their early game potential. We're going to put them here. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah. Okay. Scyther. Scyther! Uh, Scyther's good. Scyther's really good. Swords Dance. It actually has an attack stat, unlike Farfetch'd. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's put him in A tier. I mean, again, you're probably not going to catch this unless, I think it's also a Fire Red exclusive. So you're probably not really ever going to use this unless you don't get the Eevee from Celadon City and you buy it at the, uh, game corner or you get super lucky in the Safari Zone, I guess. But, you know, let's go ahead and we'll put this in low B tier for its, like, difficulty to get. But if you get it, it's obviously really good. Its move pool is pretty lackluster here because it doesn't have like X scissor or anything like that. So you're going to be stuck with wing attack and return probably, but still a very solid Pokemon and surprisingly bulky. Jinx, maybe this is what you trade Poliwhirl for. What the hell do you trade for Lickitung? Whatever. We'll, we'll take Jinx and it, it's a nice type. It's fast. It's pretty strong. So actually like if you do get this, it's quite good. Why don't we put it in low A tier? I don't know. Kind of a weird Pokemon, but yeah, it's pretty solid and you're going to devastate Lance, so that's cool. Just watch out for Charizard and Aerodactyl, I guess, if you don't outspeed. Um, Electabuzz. Uh, these, all of these Pokemon are like good, but they're just, you know, pretty niche and you're not really going to get them. I believe this is also a Fire Red exclusive. It's better than Mr. Mime, I think, but always go for Magneton. It's not better than Magneton. So I don't know, like mid B tier. Same with Magmortar or Magmar. I mean, I guess actually Magmar, if you're in Leaf Green, it's better than Rapidash. It's not as good as Arcanine though. And it's, 
I don't think it's as good as Ninetales either, so let's just put it right below Ninetales. Actually, it's probably around the same, but Ninetales you get earlier, so let's do that. Pinsir. Pinsir sucks. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Pinsir's okay. But it's not as good as Scyther, and if Scyther is high B tier, then I don't know. It doesn't get any bug moves. It's basically a fighting type Pokemon without stabs, so maybe maybe here, you know? That's eh, below. Below Firo. Firo's good. Wait, we, we brought up Beedrill, right? Let's bring up Firo as well. Yeah. Good job, Firo. Proud of you, buddy. Okay. Tauros. Uh, where's Kangaskhan? Where the hell is Kangaskhan? There he is. Here you go. Splat. You can, uh, you're faster. You're relatively bulky. I don't know. Good for you, King. Go. Okay. Gyarados. Guess where this goes? Yeah, it's, it's a Gyarados. It's really good. It's really strong. It's got Intimidate. Uh, doesn't matter about the physical special split. It's got Dragon Dance. Just Intimidate things. Kill things. It's a Gyarados. I don't, you know, I mean, it's not as good as these ones here. There. Eh, yeah. I don't know. How many times are we going to mix this up? Who knows? Good job, Gyarados. Way to continue being a broken Pokemon. Lepra. Lepra is S tier because you can guarantee it. Ice Beam into the freaking dragons. Water moves into Bruno and uh, the other, the other, you know, Blaine and, and, and Giovanni. And yeah, this is, this is a good Pokemon. Water types, who'd have thunk? Ice types, who'd have thunk? Yeah, I don't know. Here. Good job, Lapras. Ditto. Ditto is an F tier Pokemon. Don't know what to tell you. Especially without Imposter, this thing is borderline useless. Don't use it. Okay, the Evolutions. Vaporeon is an A-tier Pokemon. There are plenty of other good water types, so you don't necessarily need to waste it on Vaporeon, but Vaporeon's a good one. A good water type if you want your water type to be all cute and dog-like. So, yeah, I mean, it's probably around Blastoise. It's 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 better than Blastoise. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it in high A-tier. It's a very good Pokemon, surprisingly bulky. Surf, Ice Beam. I don't know how many times I have to say that about a pure water type, but there you go. Uh, Jolteon. Jolteon is not as good as Vaporeon, honestly. But yeah, I mean, I guess I would say that if you're going to get Eevee, evolve it into Vaporeon. Jolteon with Thunderbolt is pretty good, but electric type moves aren't super useful. I mean, I guess, especially if you got Venusaur or Blastoise, then your rival is going to have Gyarados. So you're going to want something to easily snipe the Gyarados, which is can definitely be this guy. Could be one of the other electric types, like, I don't know, Magneton. But, you know, if you don't get Magneton for whatever reason, I suppose Jolteon isn't too bad. Let's put him in high A tier. I it's a toss-up between which one of these is better. It depends on your team and what you want to do, you know? Flareon. Flareon. This poor bastard got completely screwed. Yeah, it's, it's, this is a C-tier Pokemon. Its special attack stat is not good. Its attack stat is good, but this thing won't be good for many, many generations because for some reason it, like, doesn't get Flare Blitz. Uh, and Flare Blitz isn't a move in this game, obviously, so. Sorry, Flareon. I don't know. You're cute. Y you look the fluffiest of the three. That's for sure. So, yeah. Okay, Porygon. This thing costs, like, 9 999 polka dollars or coins at the game corner and if you're in fire red and like 6,000 something and leaf green i don't know why there's a difference between the two but there is it's not worth that so i don't know like i mean this could be an f tier pokemon right we can we can get away with putting this in f tier right this isn't this isn't good it doesn't do anything here get up get over there yeah i mean no no don't waste your time with it D because of how expensive it is this has like a reverse luxury good thing you know it's like it's not worth it we're not dealing with this. Here you go. Amistar. I don't know. I think you kind of have to just pick one of the fossils. And if you're going to pick one of these three fossils, I would always go with Aerodactyl. So as much as it pains me, especially without battle armor, I don't think this guy is particularly great. He's pretty specially strong, I guess, but he's just a little too slow. Uh, he's, he's defensively bulky though. I don't know. He's not totally useless. So we'll put him in B tier, probably around with these other water types. And same with Kabutops. Like if Kabutops had waterfall or something like a physical water move, then it would be better. But uh, yeah, I think it's actually worse than Amistar in this game, at least. So yeah, these things aren't very good. But Aerodactyl, Aerodactyl is an A-tier Pokemon. It's not S-tier because it's kind of weak. It's like surprisingly not super strong, but you know, it's fast and it does good damage and you know, it's a flying pivot that doesn't suck like most of the flying types in this game. So um, I would put them around. I would put them around here. Yeah, something like this. You can also teach it an earthquake probably and not have to deal with teaching that to Dugtrio. Okay, Snorlax. I'll give you one big guess as to where this goes. This is an S tier Pokemon. It's a Snorlax. I don't know what to tell you. It's big. It's fat. It sponges attacks and does disgusting damage. This is the best normal type by far. And you guarantee it. You get two chances to catch it too, which is pretty nice. If you had to pick one of them, go and try 
try the one on the right first because on the left you can actually get Doduo, which is a decent Pokemon. So I would always go for the one on the right first and try and catch it. Be sure you have a way to quickly deal with this thing and catch it quickly because it can rest up. It can be a real pain in the ass to catch, but if you do catch it, very, very good. This thing can just like destroy Lorelei all by itself. It can destroy um, Agatha. It can do really good damage into all of Lance's Pokemon by just clicking Body Slam or Return. Yeah. This thing is a disgusting Pokemon. And you can heal up. These are legendaries. I don't play with legendaries. They're they're all good though. So, oh wait, that's it, huh? Yeah, okay. Last ones were legendaries, so. Oh wait, Dragonite. Dragonite's not a legendary. Look at this little guy. What is the level cap for this game? Is it like, is it below 55? Okay, I looked it up and the level cap is 60. So you will get this for the Elite Four, which means it is pretty good. I don't really know where you would get this. I guess you can buy it from the, uh, the Celadon game corner if you don't want to get Eevee, or you can get lucky and fish it up from the Safari Zone and catch it if you're lucky. So yeah, it's it's a solid Pokemon. It's complete trash until it evolves into Dragonite, but once you get Dragonite, it's obviously very good and it'll be super helpful into large portions of the Elite Four. So yeah, let's put it in A tier. I, I don't want to put it quite in S tier because all of these other S tier Pokemon are almost guaranteed to get. Let's put it in high A tier. It's, it's a very, very good Pokemon. It's a Dragonite. Like what, you know, what are you going to do? All right. Well, here is our tier list. Here's the S tier, the A tier, B tier, C tier, and F tier. Let me know what you guys think about this list. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm sure I made some mistakes. I there was I'm sure there's oversights that I didn't think about or some contradictions in logic, but that's part of this. Just doing my best. Would love to hear what you guys all think down in the comments. Just be nice. And uh, remember to like and subscribe and be good to each other. All right. Peace.